Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Points of Articulation. My name's Dave, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. Today, I'm looking at the Star Wars Micro Galaxy Squadron Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter. It's number 14 in the set and was released in 2022. This variant of the Jedi Starfighter was first seen in Star Wars The Clone Wars, the CGI show. Now, the Jedi Starfighter, also known as the Delta 7B Ether Sprite Class Light Interceptor, was fast, maneuverable, it had shields, laser cannons, but it lacked one thing. It wasn't able to go to hyperspace. Thus, the Republic thought about that and gave it an exterior hyperdrive ring. Now, this then is awesome. The ship and the hyperspace ring are highly detailed, and here's the coolest part. The ring itself detaches from the main ship. And we're going to take a look at that in just a few. But for the dimensions of this craft, its length is about 5.5 inches or 12 centimeters long, which is very nice and goes well with the rest of the ships. So if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is look at the mold, show off all the major points, see the gimmicks, the moving parts, then get a nice close-up look at that mold and show everybody at home what we're really paying for, those fine details. Then we'll look at the figures, the paint, compare it, and then we'll be done. So let's get started. And now looking at that mold, like in all my videos, I will go over all the major sections of the item. And then we'll get a nice close-up to see those fine details. So first of all, let's go over the hyperspace ring. We have our two engines on the sides, looking very sharp our ring itself, and our connector part with our pylons, which looks amazing. We're going to have a close-up of this in just a few. Copyright crap on the bottom. And then we have our connector piece here. So for the ease of this review, I'm going to detach this right now, and we'll have a better look at all this in just a few. Now for the Starfighter, right here we have our shield projector, cockpit, astromech, laser cannons, we also have ventral laser cannons as well, so that's pretty cool. Also in the back we have our engines, looking sharp. This section right here is for cargo, usually spare parts and components. We have some landing gear, which we'll look at in just a few. A mechanism right here that makes the R2 unit pop out, so that's pretty cool. And right in the front, we have our communications and sensors. So all in all, this is a nice looking piece. So let's go over the moving parts, and then we'll move on to the close-ups. For moving parts and gimmicks, first we have our cockpit, which it's a little tough to get open, but just like that, you open up the canopy, and you can see all the detail in there, which we'll have a close-up look in just a few. Just take it, hear that click. Next, we have our astromech. Now on the bottom here, there's a little button similar to the X-Wing Starfighter. You press this in and you can see the astromech raises. So it's easier to grab it. And you can see that mechanism work right there. Simple, but it gets the job done. Now moving on to the landing gear, check this out. You put your nail in, pull it out. And you can see it's very simplistic. And right here, check this out. That is really cool. And it is detailed. Again, we'll have a closer look in just a few. But very nice. I love the landing gear on here. Some pretty interesting gimmicks. But then is they're all useful in a way. And that's what I really like. Awesome. Now, with all honesty, the coolest gimmick is the hyperspace ring and the fact that it attaches to our Jedi Starfighter. So on the bottom of the Starfighter, you can see we have a peg hole right here, and then all this is sort of recessed in slightly. You can see a little rectangle cut out there. And that's so it could fit in this area here. Here's a little peg, and here's our hole. So it takes a little bit of pressure, but line it up. And what I like to do is I turn it this way, and just give it a little push and as you can see it snaps in it's secure it's not going anywhere and it looks pretty cool 
nice and flush for the most part. What do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments below, but I love it. I think the fact that they released something like this with the ring is pretty awesome. So let me detach that and again, there we go. And now let's get back to the review. Pretty sick, I love the landing gear on here. Pretty cool. So now let's get a close up view to see what we're really buying here. And now for a close up view, we're gonna start with the hyperspace ring, you know, just to get it out of the way. But you can see the beautiful detail in here. We have some panel lines. Lots of paint on here. It is tacky with that wash. I'm not going to lie. But the mold itself is fantastic. So that's the top. Now for the bottom. You can see it's a little similar. The paint's different. But some great little line work here. Very nice. For the interior, you can see the detailing continues. It's pretty cool. For the bottom, again, really neat. Very nice. Now for the main pylon, this is where the ship connects. We have some great line work. Here's our connector area, looking good. Then we have our other pylon right here, which looks pretty sick. I like how the interior here is sort of sunk in. So we got that little lip around the sides. Pretty cool. For the underneath, again, sunk it in. Some nice line work. And copyright crap right there. All well, pretty good for the main body. Now for the engines. Here we have some sky blue or baby blue, looking good. Our little thrusters for this ion engine component. Looks pretty detailed, I must say. And both engines are very similar, so we're just going to focus on one. But coming around here, you can see the line work, which goes back to the pylon here, which looks really cool. And that goes underneath as well. You can see this nice grate here, looking awesome. And that beautiful little, how it like tapers down and then up again. And just look at the detail on here. They really did an amazing job. I love the detailing. And this is just like the hyperspace ring. This isn't even the ship. <laughs> but really cool sorry about that when I was turning it you know it's really long when you're just looking at one end but for this intake area you can see it's very recessed in but nothing's really in there it's just sort of blah but we do have that line going across so it's not too bad I guess but all in all pretty cool I think it came out great what do you guys think about the hyperspace ring let me know in the comments below now looking at the main ship, just look at the line work on here. This is very, very impressive. Again, due to the paint, it's a little tacky, but beautifully done. The detailing is amazing. For the laser cannons, you can see this nice recessed groove. That goes for the bottom as well. There's four laser cannons there and they're looking amazing. Back to the main body, you can see super amounts of panel work, some nice little raised sections as well, looking good, and even parts that are recessed in lower than the rest. So it definitely has a lot going for it. Here in the center section, look at the detailing. We have our port for our astromech, and there's the gimmick again. You can see all the line work coming to the cockpit, which looks great. Coming to the aft, we have our fin. More line work. And then sort of like our storage area for the cargo. Looking good. And we'll get to the aft in just a bit. But it 
rest of the body. More line work here. Republic symbol. Just fantastic. Another the cockpit. And we're going to open that right now. But first, just look at the line work here in our cargo area. Now, right here, I'm pretty sure it should be rounded, like right there. But something happened. Now, I didn't do this. It came like that. And you can't really see the bottom of your craft when you're buying this. So, just keep that in mind. But all in all, very nice design. So, for the cockpit, let me open this up. And you can see the chair is beautifully done. We have actual designs on the sides, going down the walls, going down the sides right here and here. And then we have some controls in the front. This is amazing. I'm trying to keep it focused for everybody, but look at that. Now that's cool. Pretty slick. And to shut it, just shuts like that. Now for the aft, look at all this detailing back here. Fantastic stuff. And it goes all the way from the sides, over the engines, and then underneath them. Speaking of the engines, they're recessed in two times which is nice, the thrusters look fantastic. And for the detailing, they're very rounded. But it works, I think they look awesome. And that's the same for both sides. For the underneath, more line work on the outsides. Pretty slick, we have our laser cannon, our section for connecting it to the hyperspace ring. And then our tip, Coming back down, another laser cannon. Beginnings of our engines. More line work. We have our landing gear. We're gonna take a look at the landing gear last. But fantastic stuff here. Copyright crap. More detailing. Gimmick for our astromech. And then coming to the main body here with the storage canister. All in all, pretty cool. Now, when you open up the landing gear, look at that, little tiny legs. Now, that is cool. We have some negative space as well. That is amazing. I don't care what anybody says. The fact that they molded it so well is awesome. Again, they didn't even need to do it, but they did. And it blends in so well with the main body. Like, look at this flush and that's the same for this side there's no differences and then for the front one which always gives me a problem just pull that open like so and it's very blah compared to the two in the aft section but it gets the job done all in all a fantastic looking vessel so that does it for the mold hopefully i did it justice so now let's take a look at the figures for our figures, first we have R4P17, it's about half an inch or a little over one centimeter in height. For the paint, we have white, maroon, and gray. And I have to say, I do love the mold. We can see all the detailing on the head and the main body. It's the same mold we see with R2D2. And it's pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. And one thing I will say is, the paint on this particular R2 unit, or I should say R4 unit, is way better than R2-D2's. If you give me a moment and I grab R2-D2's from the X-Wing, you can see right here that the paint on the dome is not level. Such a shame, right? Ugh, boy. But regardless... This here R4 unit is pretty awesome, and I do like the paint scheme. Looking sharp. And now we have Obi-Wan Kenobi, and this looks great. For the size, he's just under 1 inch tall, or around 2.5 centimeters. For his paint, he has a whopping 5 to 6 colors, including tan, 
brown, dark brown, skin tone for his face, light brown for his facial hair and hair. Then we have some silver as well. And this looks great. Just look at the mold here. You can see all the little folds in his tunic, his pants, his boots, everything's there and looking sharp. You can even see some detail on his face and hair. Pretty nice. You can see his silver lightsaber right there. Which is pretty cool. Let me lift his arms. Look at that. Pretty sick, right? Now for his articulation, his arms can go all the way around. And his legs can bend at the hip. Just like so. So pretty cool. First, you could take R4, stick him right in the front, and then open up the cockpit, take Obi-Wan Kenobi, put him in like so, and just like that, you're good to go. Looking awesome. Now, you might be asking yourself, can you swap the astromech units? And the answer is yes. You could put R2-D2 in the Jedi Starfighter, looking pretty sharp, or you could actually take R4, and stick them in the X-Wing Starfighter. And it looks pretty cool as well. So that's nice. So that's everything I have to say about the mold and the figures. All in all, pretty nice. If I miss something, please let me know in the comments below. So now let's take a look at the paint. And now looking at that paint on a Star Wars Micro Galaxy Squadron Obi-Wan Jedi Starfighter, this bad boy has about eight different colors. We have maroon and dark maroon, tan, some black, bits of greenish yellow, silver for the engine thrusters on the actual Starfighter, and blue for the thrusters on the hyperspace ring. To end it off, we do have a nice wash, but even though the wash looks good, it is very tacky. So if you're looking to buy one of these, just keep that in mind. Now to all of you out there who are collecting these like myself, what do you think about this wash situation? It seems like most of the ships we get the wash is very sticky still. Uh, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And now for a size comparison with the Star Wars Micro Galaxy Squadron Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter seen in the center. First, on the right hand side, I have Asajj Ventress's Genevix Starfighter, which looks sick. And then on the left hand side, we have the Hot Wheels generic release, Jedi Starfighter. And as an added bonus, size comparison section with the Obi-Wan Jedi Starfighter seen on the right. On the left, we have Luke Skywalker's X-Wing, which also uses an astromech droid. If you're interested in seeing reviews of any of the craft I showed today, check the links in the description below. And that does it today for my review of the Star Wars Micro Galaxy Squadron Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter, released in 2022. I love this ship. I think it's awesome. Uh, for the mold, I think it is very well done with the fine line work on there. The paneling is fantastic. The cockpit is beautiful. And also, I can't believe I'm saying this, but the landing gear especially in the aft section, is amazing. It's so nice. For the hyperspace ring, for some reason, I think it should be bigger. I don't know, maybe it's me. If you guys think the same thing, let me know in the comments below. But it functions and works quite well. I think that the paint is nice on it. I love the maroon and the tan. The wash is a little heavy here and there. And I wouldn't mind that, but the thing is, it's very tacky still. Um, it hasn't been going on my hands like the other one, like the X-Wing did. But it feels very sticky. And to me, that's a little issue, but I guess as time goes on, it will dry up. So we'll see what happens. For the figures, Obi-Wan and R4 are very nice. The paint is great and the molds are fantastic. So that's everything I have to say about this awesome Jedi Starfighter today. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. And if you'd like to see new videos every week, subscribe. Again, to all of you out there who take time out of your busy schedule to watch my content, I greatly appreciate it, and I hope to see you next time. Bye, everybody.